A local man received commutation from President Trump before he left office. Corvain Cooper was serving a life sentence after getting a third strike for selling marijuana. Tell me who want to run with us? Mobbing back to back in them belly trucks. Blowing on that saucy to semi tough. I used to take that package, I would wrap it and send it up. Now I put money on your books until the date that you sent this up. One nigga Corvain said he living life after life. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Tons Talk. I am Anthony Allegretti, the chief operator. Operations officer of 40 Tons Brand. I have a very special guest today in the building, episode number two, all the way from the East Coast, New Jersey, the man himself, Mr. David Kunick. Actually, it's PhD, Dr. David Kunick, if you're asking. Welcome to the show. I appreciate you having me here, and I like to get up. I, I like to match on match. I like it. I like it. I'm going to have to get me one of those jumpsuits. I got you, man. What size are you? Uh, we're going to XL these days, probably. Okay, okay. I'm digging it. I'm digging it, man. Well, dude, thank you so much for coming out today. Uh, you know, I know that you know you're 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 bi-coastal. You go from you know east to west, and and so it's freezing cold out there. It's like ten degrees, <laughs> and you're out here on the west coast. And so I just want to say thank you for that. Hey, you know what? Thank you for having me here today. And uh, it's a fun little fact that even though I had cannabis businesses out in Oregon or Oregon, I should say Nevada, um, Oregon, yeah, Oregon, yeah, and Nevada, not Nevada, Nevada, mm. uh, but. You know, it's interesting. In California, each time I'm in Cali, I'm here for less than 30 hours. So this is actually my longest trip to California. And when you're like, hey, you want to come on the show? I'm like, yeah, I'll make it work no matter what. Man. And, and I'm like, where are you at? They're like, L.A. And people are like, where you got to go? I'm like, it's L.A. They're like, do you know how big L.A. is? I'm like, no. <laughs> and they're like, well, it's L.A. County. And I'm like, then why don't you say L.A. County? They just say L.A., but I'm here. I'm happy to be here. So thank you for having me, man. Of course. Of course. Thank you for coming. You know, L.A. is very different than like New York or New Jersey, right, in the sense of size, because you have way out in Lancaster, which is super far, all the way to Long Beach, all the way to like East L.A., and then you got deep in the valley. So it's like, where are you? And, you know, where it takes, you know, an hour in New York from top to bottom here, it could take two, three hours with traffic. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm laughing because... Uh, the, the place I was at before here, I'm like, well, how long is it going to take us to get there? They're like, it could take us 45 minutes or it could take us two hours. I'm like, that's over a hundred percent variance. How long is it going to take? <laughs> and I average like, we don't know. It's either going to literally be 45 minutes or it could be up to two hours. And you got, we got lucky, right? Cause you were in Ventura County and we're here in Woodland Hills. Uh, yeah. So pretty much in a nutshell, it just kind of worked out good. Um, met with some other clients out here and, it's amazing being in, technically I've been in cannabis since 2001 when I started my medical career up in the state of Maine. Okay. Because we got medical cannabis back in 1999. Correct. California got it back in 1996 and I started my first cannabis company in 2009. So I had cannabis companies in Nevada, Colorado, um, Oregon. I am doing something in Michigan for a hot minute. I've done Rhode Island, uh, but I always kept a corporate headquarters in New Jersey. Okay. And now everyone's kind of like, hey, uh, you're the you're like the Dr. Weed guy out here on the East Coast. You actually know what you're doing. You've been in this for more than 10 years. Like you actually knew what you were doing over a decade ago. Like we all thought you were crazy back then. Now you're like, hey, you know, how do Paying I get involved off. in this game? Ah, slowly but surely, my friend. So so let, let's let's take it back then. So you got into the weed business in 2000 and, or excuse me, 1999, but you started your first business in 2001. What brought you to the cannabis business? So let's actually take a step back. So um, the state of Maine got medical cannabis in 1999. Correct. I started my medical career in 2001 in the state of Maine. Medical career as in like non-cannabis, but medical. Yeah, me medical. And then in... In the, the, the clinic I was working at, we were starting to teach patients in 2001, 2002, 2003 how to use cannabis instead of opiates. Ah. So it was very early on. Cutting and, edge. Yeah. And then uh, in 2009, I started my first cannabis company. And from there, I've actually done eight cannabis companies in five different states. What was that called, the 2009 business? Uh, in 2009, that was originally called IUCSS, and which stands, which originally stands for I Use Common Sense Systems. Okay. <laughs> and what did you guys do there? Uh, so pretty much we were providing health and wellness for people and for their pets. And we were producing 100 articles every day on health and wellness, and we were already covering the benefits of medical cannabis. Wait a second. Producing 100 articles? We had a lot of writers. Wow. So yeah. you were a media company. 
In theory, sure, yes. A blogging company. We start off that way, but then we were also selling products, vitamins, other stuff. Okay. And we were covering the benefits of cannabis for humans. We were covering the benefits of CBD for dogs. Okay. Very early to the game, like extremely early. And then from there, through the power of networking, and you know me, Anthony, and, and people, if they Google me or they look at our website, part of what we do is we teach professional networking. Right. So before it was cool to network, I was already networking. And through the power of networking, we got connected to some people in Colorado uh, to do a testing lab. And so we actually did a testing lab. We didn't grow it. We didn't sell it. We tested it. And then we expanded from other states from there and yada, yada, yada. And the rest is history. Wow. Okay. So 2009, you start this business. You start, you know, really networking with everyone across the country. And then you form UCS Advisors. So UCS advisors Take us from ICCS oh. to UCS. All right, so let's let's take a step back. Uh, on paper, I technically have started 15 companies. Okay. In the last 19 years. Oh wow. Okay. And I've had seven of those uh, those 15 companies I've sold to get acquired. So Look I, at that. I, I've made money. Acquisition, at, baby. Acquisition, but I'm, I'm honest about it. I've made money. I've lost money. Okay, like, fair not, enough. Not, not everything is. Oh my God, this is perfect. Like no, sometimes like. You, you sell the company and you take the loss. You gain experience. Exactly. You Thank learn you. what not to do. Exactly. Um, and then now you could tell others. It's, it's all about paying it forward. So part of what we say here at UCS Advisors is, is that I take a medical approach towards business. Okay. And people say, well, I don't understand. What does that mean, a medical approach? I'm like, well, when you go see the doctor or your therapist or your chiropractor, they treat every patient like an individual. It's not a cookie cut program. Right. Same exact thing with business. Like, you, it, not everything is cookie cut. One could say it, medical is clinical, then, and clinical is is sterile. So, do, when you say medical, you mean it in the sense of like a one on one approach, like do, not not medical, like taking uh, medicine, but more so me medical, like getting to know that individual person, individual patient, and then from there figuring out how to solve that individual person's problems. And, and, and Anthony, you're spot on, but let's take another step further because I'm a big analogy guy. Okay. All right, we got some people here in the studio. Let's say we all have low back pain here. Okay. Your low back pain might be muscular. That person's low back pain might be because they have a shift in their pelvis. That other person's low back pain might be because they have a pinched nerve. They all have low back pain, ah. but it's all different reasons. Kind of like, hey, I need money for my company. What do I do? Well, no one's exactly the same. Okay. Everyone has different wants and needs. You know, everyone uh, learns differently too. Like one of the biggest things we tell people is you have to have a third grade approach towards your investors. Some people learn visually. Some people learn tactilely. Some uh, some people learn this all. Explain audio -wise. it to me like I'm a two year old. Is that a, yeah, pretty what much? And yeah. and that's okay. <laughs> you know, it's you know I, I joke around. I always tell people you know keep it simple, stupid, like the whole kiss method. Um, but to go back and to answer your question, I'm very good at circling back. So don't you worry about that. No good, matter good. how many tangents we go on, I'm I very it. good at bringing I love it, it back. I love, and and there's no there's no format here. Do whatever you want, man. So to bring it back, um, long story short. I took my company public, publicly traded. I lost being chairman of my board of directors. It is what it is. You got Steve Jobs? Yeah, part one. I big know time. what that's like. Yeah, exactly. So I can actually see, I, so you and I can give that analogy and I oh, understand yeah. it. So pretty much, we'll explain to the audience here. I was the chairman of my board. I had to step down for a year for one or two reasons. Uh -huh. That's a whole nother story. And I was never giving it back. During that time, I inherited two new board members that we're not a good fit for the company, but I, I got outvoted. And oh then my we, goodness. then we got some investors involved, which I knew were not good for the company, but it is what it is. And then it got to the point where when I took my company public, I had about 63 private investors. Oh, wow. Yeah. To take the company public, to raise over $10 million. Okay. 55 out of those 63 investors pretty much reached out and said, listen, um, you're kind of getting steamrolled here and you're kind of becoming the glorified scapegoat. We've made money off of you. You know what you're doing. If or when you go out on your own, we'll come follow you in a heartbeat. So went through that whole process and stepped down being CEO of a publicly traded company. Um, some I had clients on day one right away. And ironically, after I stepped down from that company, they hired me back two weeks later as an advisor. <laughs> It comes full circle. You know, it, it ironically, does. some of my questions I was going to actually ask you, which we can get to later in the segment, was like when you do get investment and you're the original founder, CEO, when is the proper time to actually 
concede that position and let a, someone that's more suitable for the job? So let's answer that question right now. So my mentor in investor relations, about 14, 15 years my senior, um, he was actually my very first business partner with my physical therapy clinics. Um, he said it best, he goes, our goal is for you to get replaced within five years. And he's like, and the reason why is that the company's going to grow so big, you're going to need someone with better experience, someone that knows how to take that company to that next level. Sure. Pretty much what, what it comes down to is that you don't have inventor syndrome. And one of the biggest things we tell people, especially- What's inventor syndrome? Inventor syndrome is kind of like I invented this pin and I know how to make this pin the best it can be, but I don't know marketing. I don't know investor relations. I don't know how to get distribution. I don't know how to grow it, but I want to maintain 95% of my company. That's inventor syndrome. Yeah. You know, like a little bit of something's better than nothing. 100%. And it takes, and listen, like my, like I always tell people this, I, I sold my physical therapy clinics, my personal training centers. Um, I did some amazing, badass things, treating Olympic athletes, professional athletes from professional uh, major league soccer players to NFL players to former professional hockey players in the NHL. I've done some cool ass shit. Heck yeah. And, you know, but, and I sold that company and I sold it because my business model, I literally, the way things were changing with the Affordable Health Care Act was going to change my business dramatically. And I was very lucky to have a business partner and some business brokers that show us the light about a year ahead of time. And so when I sold it, I'll be very frank, that was tough. That was my baby. And I went through all the process. Inventor syndrome. Yeah. Right. No, that makes sense, man. So you went through all that process. You know, inv a lot of us have inventor syndrome because we, you know, we, we create this baby and we think we know everything about the business, but we really don't. And we learn as we go. And so, you know, back to the question of like, you know, I guess you answered it five years, but like, is there, is there maybe a metric or a certain point you reach where like, you know, you need to bring in the right CEO or bring in the right CEO. And then maybe you step away as, you know, you're, you're still on the board, but like, you know, when is that right time? Right? Because a lot of us have this issue. Like we're still in the first stages of business, right? Growing the brand, getting the brand out there. But once we get investment and once we scale, we may not be the right ones to run the company any longer. And when, when is that point or what? And I know it's different, but like, so I mean, you're, you're asking, so if I was a typical business coach, I'd be like, Hey, it's X, Y, and Z. But remember we take a medical approach towards business. So everything is a very unique situation. A lot of it is really, you're going to have that, that talk with your investors. You're gonna have that talk with your board of directors. It might get to that point where here's a great example. Um, you're based out of California and now all of a sudden 40 tons, let's say is in 12 states and you just can't travel to all 12 states. You just can't do all the new responsibilities. That might be a time to come in. All right. It might be another great example is it might be where, Hey, you might have to hire a new chief operations officer and eventually they might become the CEO in the next couple of years. And you're mm. starting to do that transition phase. Like a lot of times too, like when you sell your company, they usually want the owners on for maybe a year or two to help with that transition as well too. Um, I've also been an experience of, I sold one of my companies. I was supposed to be on with them for two years. And my lawyer said point blank, he goes, the way this contract reads, they're going to find a way to kick you out within 120 days. Oh, wow. And we joked around and it was 118 days. <laughs> Boom. Like literally like clockwork. Like That brings me to my next point. Do you recommend uh, business owners, especially in the cannabis industry, to get business coaches? So. Or even take it a step further, consultants? Okay. So the short answer is yes, but it depends on what your needs are. And this is one of the things we talk about. There's a, big, there's a big difference between a consultant versus an advisor. If you notice, my company is called UCS Advisors. We are not consultants. If you look at a, what a definition of a consultant is, it is someone you bring in for a specific problem to work on it retroactively. Like you got a problem with your website. Great, I'm bringing a consultant for that. I have a problem with my marketing. I'm bringing a marketing, marketing consultant for that, all right? While an advisor, is someone that works in the company's short-term and long-term goals while using a multidisciplinary approach, meaning like you're looking at every asset of the, uh, uh, of the company and ready for this, also has real life experience. 
And that's the one just thing. Just hasn't read it in a book somewhere? Yeah. Well, or it's one of these things where, and I'm not, and we'll talk about this later because you and I had some um, off camera discussions about the scam artists that are out there right now saying, hey, I've worked for corporate America for the last 30 years and I retired during COVID. You know what? I'm a business consultant now because this is how it works in corporate America. No, it doesn't work like that in cannabis. Um, so, but to circle back to your question directly, one, I always tell people this if you're going to raise money, and you're gonna have more than one investor, hire an investor relations advisor. They're gonna literally be your middle person for you to kind of say, okay, they can deal with the investors for you. They can tell you a good deal versus a bad deal. They can also talk to you and, and really teach you how to grow the business to think two or three steps ahead, all right? A business coach, and we work with a lot of business coaches because a lot of business coaches don't work on capital raising. They don't work on fundraising. Majority of business coaches, if you ask someone, when you interview them, Hey, how do you raise money? I don't know. You just we, we tell you to go with the bank. That's not really a, a you know a question. You and I had had conversations about this offline. So a business coach can help you with building systems. A business coach can help you with you know working on your one year, two year, three year goals. But they might have a very certain niche and maybe like culturally and how to build culture in your company and mindset and leadership functions as opposed to direct capital raising and or like the building of the business itself. It, exactly. And that's why also like we tell people uh, also to me hire a business coach. Is it a business coach that's just a franchise like Sandler training? They're a national business coach. And I have a lot of our clients have used Sandler training and they do a good job with organizing your company. They do a good job of goal setting, but they don't touch capital raising. They don't touch expansion. They just talk about how to develop the systems and to help with your marketing. And that's it. Versus, there's another business coach that we do work with. And their goal is this, they have seven stages and their goal is within three years to make you a seven figure company. And Ooh, we it, might need to talk to them. And they, they, do good, they do great work, but we do a lot of work with them because they don't want to handle fundraising. They're just here, this is, this is the goal, this is your three year goal. But they're a little expensive. Do they have a lot of cannabis experience? No, not at all. Mm, okay. So that's also where it's kind of getting some advice of where you are. So another great example is, um, as, as you know, uh, and on my t-shirt, we got Mr. Chris Vaglio, the Chief Operations Officer of UCS Advisors. What's up, Chris? <laughs> yeah, Chris, you know, hopefully we'll get you out here in Cali one day soon. But Chris used to do personal branding, personal marketing, and his own video production agency. Okay. You know, we get brought in here at UCS Advisors to help with people's personal branding, personal marketing, to do it for pennies on the dollar. Hey, let us teach you a lot of stuff that you can do on your own. Hey, let's let's maximize your LinkedIn. Hey, let's let's figure out different ways to market to your audience, to your email list, to actually get more eyes on you. So, the the giving a very long winded answer. Yes, business coaches are great. They'd be very very useful. But one of the biggest things, and we we call we call a lot of times this. A lot of businesses are what we call dirty diamonds. Okay. All right. What's and a dirty diamond? A dirty diamond is someone has a great idea, great concept, but needs to be shined up. Okay. And a lot of times businesses will take that rock and they'll say, oh, it looks like a dirty pebble and they throw it away and they didn't realize there's actually a diamond underneath it. Ah. It just needs to be shined up a little bit. Okay. And that's kind of what we do. So sh speaking of shining up, you know, how does UCS advisors gain the trust of clients, right? Because it's, and this is a kind of a two-factor question. What do you guys really do specifically in order to get businesses right? Brands to, to, to hire you guys. And then how do I like get all of the chud that's out there with all these scam consultants and all these advisors that say that you can do things like how, like where do we begin? Because a lot of us are, you know, entry level, big business builders. And what I mean by that is we sold a product or service before we go down to the secretary of state's office, we open up a business, we start selling, boom. They're really one person operations with people, but they're not huge conglomerate businesses. And in cannabis, we're trying to grow this into huge conglomerates. So how do you gain the trust of your clients? And then how do I like get rid of all the crap that's out there to know what's even real? So let's start with the latter of the question, like getting rid of the crud. And this goes back to asking the right questions. Okay. And we have a lot of, I'll probably say, Roughly 60% of all our hourly clients already use someone else and already got burned and already way overpaid. I mean, so like one of the things in 2023, we're rolling out some new packages 
where we'll actually film your, your investor deck, your investor presentation. We'll actually teach you those investor fundraising skills, which you're going to need for the rest of your life anyway. Okay. For any business owner. All right. The Ask thing, the right questions. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I didn't want to. Yeah, no, what, I, what are those questions? So some of these questions, let's go to some basic ones. How, and and let's, let's be specific first off with fundraising and capital raising at first. Okay. Is and there it, a difference between fundraising and capital raising? Thing. It's the same thing. Got it. It's okay. just the same word, just because I want to answer your question about all the credit and stuff. Right off the bat, I say, okay, hey, how many cannabis companies have you worked with in the last five years? Oh, this is questions, not just, got it. So yeah. asking the right questions to these advisor consultant types. Yeah, exactly. See if they're the right fit for you. Okay, how many cannabis businesses have you worked with? It's a simple question. Great. Can you give some references? Like one of the biggest things that I think is crazy in this cannabis industry, no one asks for references, ever, ever. Our, our non-cannabis clients, like everyone associates us, with like, oh, you're Dr. Weed, ha, 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 ha. But like 40% of our business has nothing to do with cannabis, but there are businesses that might want to do a vertical of cannabis and stuff like that. But hey, do you have references? Who have you worked with? We're legacy. You know? Yeah. This this industry is a legacy industry. Uh, so yeah. we're learning how to do these types of things. Well, that exactly. You're about. But but it's okay to ask. People are always afraid to ask. It's like, no. So going back to it, like questions to ask. One, how many canvas companies have you worked with in the last year, three years, or five years? Okay. All right. Second question to ask is um, <clears throat> you know, do you have any references at all? All right. You know, another question you can ask is if you want to, does your company specialize in any certain aspect? You know, the one thing we say when it comes to investor relations is investor relations touches every aspect of your business. It'll affect you hiring employees. It'll affect you expanding your physical locations. It'll affect you when it comes to your marketing and advertising. It affects every aspect. And a lot of times with investor relations, we're really, and here's a great example, um, we talk about trust. We work with a lot of companies. We just work with the board of directors. And we're literally, because we have real life experience, a lot of it's just like this, shooing the shit. Hey, I have a problem. Can we talk about it? I need someone I can relate to. And that's the other thing is too is ask them this. Okay, hey, you're a business coach or business advisor. How many businesses have you started? How many businesses have you sold? What right. were those businesses? Everyone always says, you know, they got the knowledge, but what have they physically done? Exactly. I um I like to use the analogy, like if I'm going to go to war, do you want the guy that has a, and no, no pun on the PhD, but uh, reference I'm going to make. Do you want the guy that has a PhD in war strategy or do you want the guy that's actually been to war for the last 25 years and been in all the conflicts? Yeah, I, 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 I in give, your case, you're both. I, I, I give the cardiologist analogy. I go, I go, you need heart surgery. I go, do you want the guy that's been doing like literally a hundred surgeries a month? Or do you want the person who is like semi-retired and has been only done like 10 heart surgeries in the last year? I want the guy who does like a hundred in a month. Like Exactly, exactly. So uh, how many businesses have they started or help start yeah help start you know and that goes also back to the references as well too um and the other uh, the other aspect is also like and we get asked this question all the time how long is your average client with you for mm. and i love answering that question because we tell people listen we're case by case basis because we take a medical approach towards business some people only know us only need us here at ucs advisors for 10 20 hours we have other clients that pay us for unlimited hours on a monthly retainer Maybe the question is how, what is the like aspect ratio of the, of the length of the contract? Yeah. If you did a six month contract, did it complete? Yeah. Or, or did they leave three months into the contract? You know, because they it, weren't happy. Exactly. And that goes back to the reference part. I mean, one thing uh, we always joke around with people is this, is that we, we're a big believer in LinkedIn. LinkedIn, um, I'm very happy that LinkedIn's finally warming up to the cannabis community and all that stuff. And I tell people, if, if you have a cannabis business and you're not on LinkedIn, you're, you're, you're listing on so much potential business opportunity. But with that being said, I, I, we tell people, if someone's a business coach and they're doing all this great stuff, check them out on LinkedIn. Look at, look at what they have for, for their education. Look at what they have for their job experience. And here's a, here's a great one. Look at their recommendations. Because mm. you can't make that up. Like if you try to give someone a recommendation on LinkedIn, like they have to, you know, approve it the whole nine. Like you can't make that stuff up. Like Google reviews, I hate to say it. You could, I could literally go out and pay, uh, give everyone a hundred bucks on the street to 10 strangers say, hey, write a Google review right now for me and they'll do it. And you don't know how legit it is. Like LinkedIn, that's legit. Like though, like people, people know you and they give you a, uh, a reference, like, and we, we refer that all the time. Hey, look at, look at our recommendations we got. That's actually a great uh, nugget. I, I would even take it a step further. And if you have a brand, 
to start writing recommendations on your vendors yeah. and on other people that have helped you in any capacity from your supply chain to your marketing to your PR and write those recommendations because you'll start to get some of them back towards you as well. Exactly. Uh, so like one of my personal goals every year is to give out 20 recommendations to people that helped me out. Uh, you know, the way to pay it forward. Um, you know, a great piece of advice we tell people is when's a great time to ask for a recommendation from someone? Well, it could be after you do some work with them. It could be towards the end of the year. Great example is um, I recently reached out to about eight clients of ours that we were with for the entire 2022 year. I was like, hey, you seem pretty happy with us. Um, and you've given us some plugs, but would you mind writing us an official recommendation on LinkedIn? Six out of the eight of them within 24 hours is like, done, here you go. Thank you for asking. I would never thought of this unless you asked. And you'll be amazed how often people want to do that. So when you're looking at who to hire, and the other thing is this too, is that the cost, all right, and the refund policy. So a lot of our competitors hate, hate, hate UCS Advisors refund policy. And I tell people it's about giving them peace of mind. So example, we offer a 10 hour package, all right? You have 10 hours. If you're not happy with our services or the way things are going, we'll give you a refund for any unused hours within the first three months. Great. So let's say we start working together and you're like, Dr. David, dude, this is this not working out. And you got eight hours left. Great. I'll give you a refund back for your last eight hours. You know, that's not going to make or break us. You know, and the other that's thing is doing good business. Well, the other thing is, too, is that most people and we and this is an old marketing trick I used for personal training in physical therapy is, OK, start off with a smaller amount. Let them try you out. If they like you, they're going to you know, sit here and do more. That's why we do a 10 hour package. Like we're offering a, a new package soon um, when we're finalizing the name of it, but it's pretty much the uh, the pitch perfect investor package. Got it. Where people can actually submit their their investment deck to us. We will actually give a written assessment on it if they want to. We can actually videotape them, give their giving them their presentation with constructive criticism on how to present properly, what what words they should maybe not say because it's misleading to the investor. Sure, how sure. to answer questions properly, how to carry yourself, small stuff like that, and it's pretty much less than a thousand dollars. And so it's like, okay, if you like this, great, then we can move on to the next thing. Yeah. Um, and it's amazing how many people start with a ten-hour package with us, and I want to say in the last five years, it's less than ten refunds we've given. And out of those less than 10 refunds, five of them, I know for a fact, were because they got all the money they needed in less than 10 hours. And out of those five companies got all the money they needed. That means you're working. Yet three out of those five companies hired us as just a general advisor for six more months after that. Dude, that's amazing, man. That's awesome, man. You know, big shout out UCS Advisors. What, what does UCS stand for, by the way? All right. So if we're in, so if we're in cannabis, okay. it stands for Use Cannabis Safely. All right. Okay. I'm a medical guy. Listen, at the end of the day, I'm still a medical professional and I really believe you should know what you're putting to your body. Okay. All right. And then for the non cannabis people, it stands for use common sense. Come on. That's, that's as simple as it gets, man. And the, and the common one, sense isn't so common, though. It, that is true. And sometimes, like, also, this is where, like, I'm going to give you, as I said, mentioned before, sometimes we're brought in just to literally do a powwow with the CEO or the COO and just kind of shoot the shit on like everyday problems. And the reason why that is, is that you're so close and you're so focused on what you're doing, you're not realizing the bigger picture. or are not really realizing some problems or like we'll say, hey, you gotta look past the hood of the car, you know? And, and right now you being the CEO, you're so close, you know everything that's going on, you're just looking past the hood of the car. We need to teach you to look further down. That makes total sense. Yeah, like you're 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 spending all your time in your business and not on your business. Yeah, exactly. You know, and that brings me to you know my next question. You know, and, and we're 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 going through this. We're 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 raising and we're we're trying to build this brand and be as big as we can possibly be. What are some uh, important questions that you know that investors are going to ask founders when they're seeking investment? So right off the bat, how the fuck am I going to get my money back? <laughs> okay. Like literally, that's a good answer. Like literally, that's the biggest thing. People are like, oh, I'm going to give you equity. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And I'm like, great. How am I getting my money back? That's the very first thing an investor is going to ask you. How am I going to get my money back? And most people like say, oh, well, I'm going to acquire. And if you don't, and people are like, oh, I never thought about that. Or then I say to them, um, this is me and Chris and I laugh about this all the time. You're going to make all this money, supposedly, and your performance, the best things since sliced bread, and you're going to have these huge profits. 
but you're not going to pay back the investor any money at all for the first four years. That comes across really selfish. Like, hey, look at your profit margins. You're going to clear X amount of money. You're not even going to pay a dividend. So right off the bat, you got to ask them. Yeah, investors are always going to ask how they're going to get their money back, all right? The other thing is, too, is what protections the investor has, all right? Uh, it could be, hey, we're going to pay you a certain percentage of the profit until you get back your money, and then X, Y, and Z will occur. Um, it could be, hey, we're raising a million dollars, but until we raise the first half a million, it's going to stay in our lawyer's escrow accounts. Okay. So, like, you know, your money's not going to be wasted. Um, and what we call that aspect using the positive power of negative preparation. Okay. Right? Expand the, on that. So the positive power of negative preparation is this. You need a million dollars, Anthony. And part of, and this is a lot of what we do with our clients, we have to strategize every potential question you're going to get ahead of time. Okay. So you are prepared for it ahead of time. Even if you don't know the answer, it, this you practice and say, hey, you know, great question. Thank you for asking that. I just, I, I, I'll get back to you in a week with that answer. Like, and most people don't even Be have honest. The, yeah, but most people don't have the confidence to do that. But that's part of the positive power of negative preparation. So an investor is going to ask you about how do I get my money back? Okay. All right. How's my money protected? All right. We're seeing a lot more too. You have to have a specific marketing plan. I hate when people say, oh, I'm just going to do social media. We're going to do community outreach. And like they literally say, give me a million bucks, but I'm going to literally write this much on my marketing plan. No, like they really want to know, like, how are you going to do this? All right. Um, the other thing is, too, is part of and we spend a lot of time for our clients with this is that raising money is telling a story. And all you're doing is telling a story back up by objective data. And that's that's the art of fundraising. And, and what, what happens is either people have a really, really good subjective story, but they have no data to back it up. Or especially for uh, people that are like have products or very specific products, they have a great, great all this objective data but they don't know how to tell a story. Gotcha. And so you got to combine those two together. Um, and then the last thing is don't ask for a dollar until you have everything put together properly, such as your elevator pitch, all right, such as your one-page executive summary, such as your investor pitch deck, your business plan, your pro forma, all right. Um, those are things that people are going to look for right off the bat. And if you don't have it yet, that's a big issue. And another great thing we tell people is if you're so confident on your fundraising, go spend a few dollars with your lawyer and get the investment documents done. And I'm going to give you a great story. At, and what uh, are those investment documents? Just you mean like whether it's a safe, whether it's a how, whatever the vehicle is? Whatever the vehicle is, but also too like, hey, let's say you're doing a loan and you're offering, hey, you invest in my company for a minimum of $25,000. We're going to do it as a loan. Have the lawyer make that, that contract up already so someone's interested, you can send them to them right away. One of the biggest things I laugh at, at like Benzinga, MJ BizCon, it even happened at MJ Unpacked is that we saw some potential, really good potential deals. And we saw some great opportunities. Great. Have, send me over the, the legal paperwork for so my lawyer to review. Oh, I don't have that done yet. Pff, instant yellow flag. You have the balls or the audacity to ask us for money as an investor, but you don't even have the paperwork to even have me review you review it yet. Okay, you're not prepared. This is the type of education that we need in this industry because a lot of us don't have it. Yeah. Right? We've never raised money before, and the money that we did raise was, you know, our uncle or our friend gave us, mm -hmm. you know, 50K, and we went and redid the work. So, like, this is what I can expect if, you know, if we hired UCS advisors, yeah. right? And, and that's... Not me, but facetiously, yeah. like we're working with you already. But like, the one, one needs to be taught how to do all these things. Exactly, and let's and let's go back to your initial question about trust. Okay. And you you asked me point blank, how are people? How do people trust you? And the biggest way people trust us is one, I've already been in the industry for over a decade. You know, one of the original founding members of the New Jersey Cannabis Business Association, on the was on the board of directors for the Medical Marijuana Caregivers of Maine. One of the founders of the now defunct uh, uh, Nevada Cannabis Testing Lab Association. Like, gotcha. opening the business, sold the business, but I'm also an investor myself. I also represent investors. So when people say, I need help with X, Y, and Z, another question you can ask is, okay, do you invest in cannabis companies? How often do you invest? What have you invested in? 
Because what I think is really interesting when it comes to capital raising, fundraising, and even business operations, how many people have never owned a business their entire life? Right. Had never built a business and, and never sold a business. Because selling a business ain't easy, man. Like, no. It is difficult. Like you are Creating your valuation is crazy as well. Like It's uh, all of it together. It, it is. And, and now let's take another step further where here's a great example. Um, there's, there's a company, a few companies on the East Coast. They're consultants. And we had a few of their clients leave and come to us. And the the pitch deck was just horrible. The, they didn't have the executive summary. And like we try like meeting with them and talking with them about the client. And they started to yell and scream on the phone. We're like, okay, lack of professionalism. But we told the clients, they go, why did you go with these consultants? They go, oh, well, they invest in cannabis. I go, no, they don't. They only invest in cannabis stocks. They don't invest in any private equity companies at all. They go, oh. How did you know that? I go, because I asked them. So there's a difference between investing in cannabis companies. And that could go back to the question when you're asking them, have you ever invested in cannabis companies, specifically private equity? Exactly. You know, and, and, and that's one of the biggest things where people don't realize that. And it's asking those specific questions at times. And the other thing is this, too, for all you listeners, and don't get mad at me when I say this, because I usually get a, a little pushback, but... Remember, the word free only gets you so far. Right. All right. People forget the human brain, if you're doing something for free, will only give you the basic level answer. There's no incentive for them to think of even more. And the other thing I tell people is this. You'll pay your lawyer for that legal document to make sure it holds up in the court of law. You'll pay your accountant to get that kick-ass performer to make sure it's done real and legit. But when it comes to your business coaches or your business advisors, no, they'll do it for free. All right. Now, I'm going on a roll here. So I'm going to take another step further for everyone listening. So here's another green nugget. When you get advisors for your company, you have to hold your advisors accountable. All right. Okay. You need to come up with a sheet on if you're going to talk about your advisors. And people tell me all the time, I have all these great kick-ass advisors on my board and you know, I want to talk to my, my potential investors about the advisors. And investors are going to say, how much equity did you give them? And what are they doing for you on a monthly basis or a quarterly basis? Because so many people get all these advisors and I'm like, great, what do they do for you? And, and one of my favorite, this literally happened last night out here in California with a potential client. So true, this literally just happened last night, Anthony. So uh, these two women business owners are trying to grow their cannabis brand. Um, they're having issues raising money and they need a lot of work. I'll leave it at that. We went over our costs and they go, no, we don't pay anyone. I, you know what? Send us, uh, send us over your information. We'll review it with our team. I go, great. Who signs the check for the team? Well, I do. Me and my business partner. Okay. So you're talking to your other advisors. If, if you should do this, they go, yeah, I go, great. How much money have they, how much money have they invested into your company? Not $1. Okay. How many investors have your advisors introduced you to? None so far. Okay, um, what have your advisors actually done for you so far? Well, they did a little pro bono work and that's it. Okay, so they're an advisor that's given you no money, has introduced you to no investors, and they only did a little pro bono work, but you need to talk to them to see if we're a good fit for you. But they're not giving you any money for this. And no, the pro not. bono work is probably some sort of like, work that's in the business not necessarily growing. exactly it's you know like maybe they give you a little bit of pr work or they'll give yeah. you some you know bookkeeping or whatever it may be and, and and there are people in cannabis that you and i both know and i won't say names that are on 30 40 different advisory boards around the country just because of the name <laughs> they don't do anything it's just the name and then I, i'll never forget this is one person who is actively raising money and i went up to them and i was just like hey man i go seen your name on like literally like 11 pitch decks bro like dude like are you doing this stuff these guys he's like no they just want to use my name and they paid me to use my name i'm like first off good for you that's a great side hustle <laughs> all right kudos to you i'm all about making that money but dude i go okay so you're not doing anything he's like no they just want to use my name because it looks good and investors pay attention to that stuff so when you ask, hey, when it, what questions you want to ask for it, hey, you can have a kick-ass advisory board, but be prepared if you're going to name drop. What are they doing and what do you expect from them? And, and the other thing is, too, everyone listen here, and this is a great green nugget advisor tip from Dr. David, and you'll hear me use the term green nugget because that's what we do here. We give out green nuggets, is it's okay to hold your advisory board responsible. All right? If yeah. You, and if you're going to be doing something really cool in this industry, 
you can hold your advisory board responsible. There's nothing wrong with that. And with that being said, though, and here comes the green nugget, hold on to your equity for as much as you can. And people give up their equity so quickly. But at the end of the day, and let's talk about lawyers for a second. I, I know lawyers in cannabis that literally will do work for free for a piece of equity. And these business owners are like, oh, well, I have this lawyer doing this. And look, I get my piece of equity. I go, yeah, they're on like 40 different applications, man. They know not everyone's going to make it. So yeah, they'll take a small piece of equity of like 40 companies knowing that only maybe five or six will make make it and that's it. And that's all they, that, that's what they're banking on. And like, oh, because you can also ask, and this goes back to asking the question, if someone's going to be on a advisory board, they want equity, ask them, great. How many other canvas companies are you part of? How many other advisory boards are you part of? You know, are, are, you, know, are, are you just using this as a potential, uh, you know, cash cow from us down the road? I have a question. So what about advisory members that like really do advise you, but they may not be advising you on like fundraising and capital raises, but like they're really helping you in the business. Is there like two different types of advisory boards? Like, is there an advisory board that you give equity to versus an advisory board that you don't? So great question. Short answer is I recommend giving no one any, any equity at all. Okay. If you want to make sure you have uh, key performance indicators, KPIs. How do to, I incentivize them then to be my advisor? Well, the thing is, though, you may not need an advisor right away. That's the whole thing. Okay. So usually most people get too many advisors in the beginning. You don't need a whole bunch of advisors in the beginning. Okay. Yeah. You maybe want that, that lawyer advisor, that account advisor. Um, to be quite frank, even though we get pigeonholed here at UCS, I remember 40% of our business is nothing to do with cannabis. And I only bring that up because out of, those, out of that 40%, 80% out of that 40%, we're giving general business advice. Hey, we've been through it. We started a company, we built a company. We started a company that had one employee, built it to over 300 employees. We took another company public. You know, we, we've had several different exits as well too from private companies. So we can give you that real life experience. But that also goes back to sitting down and talking with someone and asking the right questions. Hey, I need help more than just capital raising. And... Here at UCS Advisors, we get very much pigeonholed into, well, I don't need money, so I don't need your help. And then they come down to us down the road and saying, hey, Dr. David, you got referred to us by like three other people, but we don't need help with capital raising. We just need help with how to navigate these wars and how to keep growing our company, not to know what these pitfalls are. Um, and that's where we're also seeing the fact that we have real life experience in this industry for over a decade and we've survived and we're still here. We're seeing people coming back. So, but the thing is though too, Anthony, to answer your question again directly, what to give them, it could be, hey, um, you need some general business advice. Okay, I'll give you 4% equity in my company, which would be grandfathered in after a year in exchange for you giving me 10 hours of your time every quarter. So I need 40 hours of your time in exchange at the six month mark, I'll give you 2% equity. And at the end of 12 months, I'll give you the other 2%. You know, so you hold it accountable. Don't give it away right away. I mean, even advisory boards that I'm part of, of some larger, M of some, like I'm, I'm on the advisory board of a couple up and coming MSOs. Um, and yes, I get a little bit of equity, but I got stuff I got to hit every quarter in order to keep my contract valid. And I'm held accountable, which is great because I should be held accountable if you're going to give that to me. So that takes us to the next point. Like many of us are just operators. We're knee deep in the business. We're selling the, you know, with the, the products, the services. You know, how do we know what to hold them in? Like, like how do how like how do you make someone accountable? How, like, what are things that you do? Like, how do I even know what to hold them accountable with if I'm a new person? Like, would you say that really the very first educational consultant slash advisor slash type of person I need would be someone that is a cannabis business advisor to that could then help me do these things? Because a lot of our people don't know. Like, how short do I know answer, what to ask so, you? So short how do I know? So to answer that that last question, the short answer is yes. Go for Canvas Business Advisor who's done it before, okay? I'm not saying I get yourself locked into a six-month contract, nine-month contract. We're circling back to this is why a lot of our competitors don't like us at UCS Advisors because, hey, sign up for 10 hours. Here's a refund policy with it as well, too. Let's start to get to know one another, see if we're a right fit, and we go from there versus, hey, Anthony, you have to commit to a minimum of six months. You got to pay me a minimum of $10,000 a month. And you're like, I don't know what the fuck I even need. Why am I going to pay this guy 10 grand a month? So that's where one, you can kind of go backwards, you know, start to build that relationship. And the second part is this. And for all the business owners, 
write down your problems. Literally, just write down your problems. We, we have, and here's a great example. There's a be THC beverage company on the East Coast. Um, great, amazing person. He's a serial entrepreneur. We met at one of the campus conferences, and we saw each other like two or three more times at other campus conferences. He's like, Dr. David, here's my list of problems. He literally had a handwritten sheet of six problems and goes, which of these problems can you help me with and how? And I looked at the list. I go, I can only help you with two out of these six problems, and here's how I would help you. He goes, great. Two out of those, those, two, those two problems you mentioned are, are my top three. I'd love to hire you for 10 hours to see if we're a right fit. That's it. Wow. You know, so I tell people, just write down your problems. Like, hey, um, like Chris Faglia, once again, Chris, you're getting some love, some shout outs. So make sure you do your video thing. Give yourself some, some good sizzle reels on this. But one of the main reasons I brought Chris Faglia on, onto my team is the guy has 20 years of video, produc video production uh, for products and services. He knows how to do stuff on a shoestring budget. He knows how to give advice that you can use our advice. So a lot of times people come to us and we're like, hey, listen, Dr. David, I don't really need, I only need a couple hundred grand. If I heard I can get that on LinkedIn, what do I do? Great, we'll teach you how, how to do all what you need to do on LinkedIn. And we can teach you that. We have other people say, hey, you know what? I'm, I'm a small operator. I don't need any capital. Just, I can't afford this marketing company that wants to charge me like $5,000 a month. Like, I don't know how I can do this. Great. You can try us out for 10, 15 hours if you want. We can start teaching you these things. That's what it is. It's it's basically fractional work. Exactly. A lot of us have this mindset that if you have to hire someone, you got to pay them their full year's worth of salary. And yeah. you really don't. You can literally hire a fractional person. And it's a great word because there's so many fractional CFOs. And I right. listen, I'm a big fan of fractional CFOs. Heck, I, I've used a fractional CFO myself on, for a couple of my companies. Like some people are like, oh, you're like a fractional advisor. Yeah, we're for 10 hours a week. That's fractional. Well, yeah. Well, or even like so what we do is and this is what also makes us, uh, no, it's for us. The 10 hours are good for up to 90 days. Plain and simple. You, you, we go at your pace. It could be, hey, Anthony, this is what you got to work on. Uh, great example, um, even today, someone is needing help with, with their capital raise or have some issues. They're a former client of ours. They came back. They said, hey, we thought we could do this on our own. We can't. We need you again. And we had our kickoff talk, call at 6 a.m. today here uh, in California. So that was a little early for me. That's <laughs> on the East Coast. But um, we literally gave them their homework assignment. And they go, great. We'll, call, we'll get back to you in the next 14 to 20 days awesome because they know the hours are good for 90 days so we're going at your pace and that's the beauty of it is that and like and what i don't understand is that you said it best you can hire a fractional cfo you can hire like a fractional lawyer but for business coaches you gotta do them full-time nah that's hogwash that's bullshit man you don't need to do that yeah you know it's 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 i'm learning this too like as we're growing this multi-state national brand and you know I hire my graphics team like that. I hire someone to do PR like that. You know, everything is all in fractional things. So it's like, why not hire the business person to do that? I always say Tony Soprano had a shrink. Yeah. Right? Axe from Axe Capital and Billions yep. mm -hmm. had Wendy Rhodes. Mm -hmm. Right? Like you need that person. You need that life coach, business coach, business person, advisor to really help you take yourself to that next level and take your company to the next level. And for whatever reason, as business owners, we feel like we shouldn't invest into that. And I don't know why that is. You yeah, it's, I mean? it's, it's like, heck, I even use a stress management Or get coach. it for free. Yeah. Like I, I have a stress management coach slash dietitian that I use. I, we have a weekly meeting. Uh, I've been using him since February of 2022. And even myself, I see the, the positive effects it's had on me and my own business. Yeah. So, and the other thing is too, is that um, sometimes just reaching out and doing it the proper way, like, hey, like you and I talk about mentorship. Yes. And we have more people that come to say, hey, I want a mentor. I'm like, are you really committed? Like, you can kind of give up in like 30 to 45 days. Majority of people will give up in 30 to 45 days because you're not going to be held accountable. You know, if I'm going to give you my time, you got to be held accountable. And it's the same exact thing where when business owners get started because they don't really know exactly what they need, first thing you do is just write down your problems. All right. And if you don't always know your problem, sometimes you got to take a look in your blind spot and, and it, because you're almost too close to the project. That's what it is. It's a, it's being too close to the project and being in the business and not out of the business and not where you're looking from the top down. You know, speaking of mentors uh, and speaking of, you know, building teams, um, rumor has it that you personally like to hire either a felons or uh, veterans. I heard that from somewhere, and I just want to know, is that true? 
Oh, it's 100% true. It's, uh, yeah, it's very much true. Okay. Uh, so my older sister works for the federal prison system, um, and she's almost 10 years older than me, and from touring a lot of federal prisons, and also seeing just, you know, sometimes, listen, you made a mistake, and you served your time, you're reformed, like, you know what? You deserved a shot, plain and simple. So something that uh, we do here, and I've always done of all my companies, is each time I have a new position to hire, I always try to hire, I always try to interview at least uh, one ex-convict. I don't know if that's a PC thing to say or the proper way to say that. No, that's cool. Convicts yeah, are, yeah, are convicts. Yeah, uh, I always interview at least one ex-convict, and I always interview one veteran, no matter what, for every position. Really? Yeah, just um, and I'm I'm proud to say I've hired uh, over my career from all my companies uh, eleven. Uh, People that all went to uh, either federal prison or state prison for more than a year. Um, and then I've hired almost. That's a requirement now. If you need to, if you want to work for UCSF, you have to have gone to prison for more than a year. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I've also hired over 20 plus veterans. So, nice. um, you know, it's a way to, the way I look at it, it's a way to give back to the community. It's a way to also give people a, a second chance. And I tell people, hey, whether you like it or not, like I actually had two employees during my physical therapy days quit when I hired this one uh, ex-convict and they were just in like, they just couldn't fathom it. And I'm like, why? I'm like, everything this guy says is yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. No, sir. Goes the extra mile, shows up five minutes early to everything, stays 10 minutes late for everything else. Like, and the guy is getting a salary job with health benefits. Has a work ethic. Yeah. Like, you know, like he's, he, he's, he's happy as, you know, as a pig and shit right now, like literally rolling around the mud and it's like, Hey, I'm like, why was I'm like, well, it's either him or me. And I'm like, I'm keeping him to like, really? I go, yeah, because at the end of the day, the guy deserved a shot. And to sit here and when you're interviewing the guy, because my interview questions are very odd. Like I, I tried trademarking my interview questions. I, I didn't get approved, but like, here are some of my interview questions. Tell me three words that describe you and why. You know, hey, what's the most difficult thing you've ever had to overcome in your life? All right. Uh, one of my favorite ones, and, here, and I'll tell you this question because I'll never forget the answer I got. And this person did not get the job. Okay. What is your biggest weakness and what have you done to overcome it? Like, I want to know you. And this, this person goes, my biggest weakness? Oh, that's simple. It's chocolate. Go, Excuse me? Yeah, it's chocolate. I'm like, okay, can you explain that a little bit more? <laughs> okay. Well, um, you give me chocolate. Oh, you can't have one piece. I got I to gotta have a lot of pieces of chocolate. Okay, that's a good joke. Like, all right, so what really is your, your biggest weakness? That's not phone. No, I wasn't kidding. It was chocolate. All right, next. Like, no. Like, that, sorry, like, you ain't the right fit for us. <laughs> um, but those are the type of things, like, I want to know about the person. And I always ask people, too, when, when we interview them, what's your one-year goal, five-year goal, ten-year goal? Like, I'm very proud to say over 20 of my former employees either all own their own business or they're senior-level executives. Because when I interviewed them, they're like, hey, my goal in five years is not to be with you. It's to actually have my own business. Great. Stick with me. I will help you make your dream a reality. I actually want to uh, talk to Chris. Um, I want Chris to video this and we'll, we could put this out on both of our platforms, but I want you to interview me as if I was a new person coming in and like, <laughs> and, and like we, we, we could teach people like it'll be dope like like s seeing that. Speaking of, uh, of you know, ex-convicts and, and, and military people, um, it leads me into my next segment before we get out of here. We got about five minutes left, but um, I want to bring up we uh, a cannabis prisoner that we um, – will be uh, showcasing on, on this particular episode, Mr. Edwin Rubies. Um, Edwin Rubies is a guy that got 40 years for a cannabis offense. Uh, there was no violence in his, in his um, case. He's been down for 25 years, and I just did an article on him uh, in Skunk Magazine. Shout out Julie and everybody over at Skunk. Um, and uh, what we did was we did, we, in the article, instead of just writing about the prisoner, we wanted to do something a little bit different. And what I did was I took his resume and then I took someone from actually came to our cannabis conference resume and I put two of them side by side and let the viewer reading the article pick who they would hire. And you're naturally going to naturally pick Edwin. Mm -hmm. Just because the way that he, he, what he's done over the last 24 years, he's gotten a master's degree while in prison. Um, and then you read on and you say, yeah, but you can't hire this guy because he's sitting in federal prison for what we're here making money off of. So Edwin, I'm going to introduce you to 
Dr. David, when you come home, hopefully you come home this year, 2023, and I guarantee you, you will have a job. And Edwin is the type of guy that would go beyond for you. And that's what we want to highlight here is we want to highlight stories of cannabis prisoners and we want to obviously get them out of prison, but then we also want to help them not recidivate by giving them access to folks like David and career conferences, brand resumes, et cetera, et cetera. So, and I'm happy you brought that up because it's amazing how messed up our system is. Like th these halfway houses are meant for you to fail. Like even like, and I've had to deal with probation officers. If you halfway officers. do anything, what do you do? Yeah, you're, you're you going to fail. fail. Yeah. And I even sit here and I'm like, like I, I, like I've had to deal with, with probation officers, and I don't forget one of my employees uh, was had to do like a next step for his probation officer and got a really really bad motorcycle accident. Went to the hospital. Like literally everything's documented. Probation officer's like, sorry, he got sent back to prison for a year and a half. I'm like, dude, you got to be kidding me. Like I'm writing letters of recommendation, being like, this guy's an excellent employee. He's this and that. Like the guy got in a motorcycle accident that wasn't his fault. He was hit by a car. He is in the hospital. You know, everyone sees this, everything's documented, and still, you're going to send them back. I mean, the, the system's made, made for you to fail at times, and, and part of our job in being in this industry, and I tell people this, one, if you're in cannabis, that means, one, you're environmentalist, which means that, hey, you care about the environment, because, you know, naturally. Secondly, it means you care about people's health, and you want to make sure that people are, are healthy, and right. you, you're doing this for the right thing. And the third thing is that, listen, a lot of people got screwed over by the system, by this drug. Yeah. And it's part of your job to be plant. active with it. That's called a plant. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. You're right. Medicine. You're right. You're right. Medicine. You're right. You're spot on. You're spot on that. So I little hit myself, but you know, you have a, a social responsibility and that's the other thing is too, is that you talked about questions. Okay. What do you do to give back to the community? Like I love when people ask me, oh, well, if you're an advisor, what are you doing to give back? I'm like, well, actually I love that question. Yeah. I do X, Y, and Z, da, da, da. versus asking another coach or another advisor, what do you do to give back to this, to this community? And you hear nothing. Uh, maybe you're not the right fit for me then. So that's a great, great point. Um, you know, we're, we're a community based business and, you know, I love working with folks that, you know, give back to the communities that, you know, have been impacted by the war on cannabis. You know, we're getting towards the end of our show here, and I just want to pay a couple of bills and give a couple of shout outs. First of all, big shout out UCS Advisors. Um, you know, definitely make sure you tap in with them. Follow David here uh, on all platforms, specifically LinkedIn, so that you can really learn and know about your business. I, I, I'm not biased about this. I'm, I'm dead serious about hiring coaches, whether it's nutrition coaches, whether it's family life coaches, whether it's for your partner, whatever it may be, you need coaches. And so I highly recommend UCS advisors uh, as your cannabis business coach, as well as uh, to help raise for your business. Uh, the product that I want to talk about today is Hemper. Hemper, shout out Hemper. We have a big partnership coming out with them in 2023. We've got two prototype bogs. We got these keepers that you can get from them. So make sure you check out Hemper. They're one of the biggest cannabis accessory brands in the business. Always want to give a shout out to Owls Oil. We got some really cool hemp products with them. We've got some products with Sunset Connect and Herbal uh, Distribution, uh, who distributes us in California. But make sure you look out for 40 tons in 2023. We're coming to Maryland, and we're coming to New York, and potentially Connecticut and New Jersey. Speaking of New Jersey. Oh, yeah. So definitely want to give love to uh, to all the companies that we work with. We also uh, have a um, collab coming out with Saucy. Shout out Alex Todd. And so we want to give a shout out there. Always love and respect to Corvain Cooper and L'Oreal Allegretti, uh, my two uh, co-founders in this business. If it wasn't for the life sentence that you serve, Corvain, we wouldn't even have um, a brand to go uh, you know, to market with. So we definitely appreciate the sacrifice that you made. We appreciate the sacrifice that all these cannabis prisoners have made because without them, we wouldn't even have an industry. Um, and so we must always remember where we come from. Uh, even if we outgrow the people that we started with, we must always remember where we came from and pay homage to that. Because I always say, uh, you know, Jay-Z said it best. He said, motherfuckers saying they made hove, made hove say, okay, make another hove. And what that is reference to is people always say, well, I made you, or I did this for you. You make your own self. However, what you did for me changed my trajectory, my velocity is what will always take me to the next level. My own personal velocity is what makes me. But the trajectory, what you did for me 20 years ago, is what makes it so that I even have a velocity to even go towards. And so that's the difference between when someone says they made you. And so I always want to look back to those folks that may have given you that first job. Yep.
They gave you that first opportunity. Those are the people that we always have to say thank you to, pay homage to, and remember that if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have that this runway that we now grew and created. So shout out to those that came before us. Is there anyone or anything that you'd like to, you know, give a shout so, out to? Qu so quick shout out to you and the 40 tons because you have a great message and you're doing it the right way. And kudos to everything you're doing. Wish you guys the best of luck. And the biggest thing I'm going to end with is this. Our company motto is always be willing to achieve your greatness. Because I'm a big believer in we all have greatness within us. And your greatness might be different than my greatness, might be different than that person's greatness. But we all have greatness within us. The question is this, are you willing to achieve it? And if you are, great things are going to happen. So don't be afraid and surround yourself by positive-minded people that are going to believe in your vision and not put you down. And that's the biggest life, le life lesson I've learned by starting 15 companies is that it, it takes a whole team. Not one person can do it, and you got to have that solid team. So thank you for doing what you do. Thank you for your trust in me and UCS Advisors to help you out because I do appreciate it. And everyone, always remember, always be willing to achieve your greatness because you got this. You got this. And, you know, before we get out of here, because I'll wait for uh, Andrew to come back, definitely want to give a big shout-out to Hayes Radio. This is the station that we're doing at. Make sure you go to... If you have a television that has Roku or Apple or Amazon Fire Stick, you can download Hayes uh, Network TV on that station, and you'll be able to see this podcast. We also uh, are entering into a, a media partnership with Respect My Region, um, so you'll be able to see us on the Respect My Region um, platform, as well as big shout out to Purple Banter. Purple Banter is behind the scenes doing all the editing and the cuts and all the cool stuff that uh, that your your boy Chris does uh, for you guys. Other than that, man, I just want to say thank you, man. Uh, Dr. David has been like a Yoda, and I it's always say to him, I'll be your Luke Skywalker. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm it, it, you know, when it comes to mentorship and you're a mentee, just be Luke Skywalker to the Yoda and Yoda will give you the game. Very well said. Very well said. And by the way, as Anthony said, reach out on LinkedIn. And the other thing is this, too. If you're going to a cannabis conference, reach out to the people you want to talk to ahead of time. I'll tell you right now, I give everyone at least 15, 20 minutes of my time that reach out to me before a conference. Hey, you're at the same conference I'm going to. Can I talk to you for 20 minutes? So sure, you're going to take the time and effort to reach out to me ahead of time. I'm going to give you the time then. Great point. Real quick, before we get out of here, best conference uh, for cannabis to attend to if you're trying to raise money. Oof, I was, I'll probably say MJ Unpacked or Benzinga. I usually say MJ Unpacked due to the fact they have the brands, the marketing, and they have a, a bunch of different hedge funds, and a lot, and everyone there is pretty much an accredited investor, so you have a lot of individual investors. But uh, MJ BizCon, uh, I'm sorry, uh, MJ Unpacked, they have a show coming out in April in New York City, and then back again in the fall in Las Vegas, as well as you also have Benzinga. Canvas Conference. Those are the, the top two I'd probably recommend. Definitely. I've been to both. I think both of them are great. I think both of them have their 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 niche that they have. Yep. Um, big shout out to George uh, and yep. Kim over there at, at Unpack. They've, they've done a lot for us. In fact, they debuted our uh, 20 by 20 prison cell. I loved it. I, lo I, lo I loved your booth. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. I, I like the fact that everyone you talk business to, how to do it in the cell. And it makes people give a real life perspective on it. I loved it, man. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. And um, yeah. Uh, why don't we, before we close this out, tell everybody where they can find you at, what's the website, how they can contact you, and uh, we'll uh, close it out. Sure. So really simple. Uh, LinkedIn, it says David Kunick, C-U-N-I-C. -C. You can check out UCS Advisor, which is singular.com. Um, and the other way, too, is if you want to, you can check out our LinkedIn page, UCS Advisor. I'm sorry, not LinkedIn, our uh, Instagram page, UCS Advisors. But best way to get a hold of me, LinkedIn, 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 David Kunick. And you can check out UCSAdvisor.com and always be willing to achieve your greatness. And if you can't get a hold of him, hit me up. I'll make sure I contact his secretary's assistant because he definitely, you know, can get busy at times and may not return <laughs> your call. I'm just teasing. He's always good at that. Much love, much respect. Episode two, Tons Talk. And we appreciate you. No one should be in prison for a plant. We're not saying that we didn't sell weed without a license. We're saying that the punishments don't fit the crimes. And what we're saying is, is that now that this plant is legal, we need to free the cannabis prisoners because there should be nobody in prison while we're making money off the same thing that they're in prison for. Very well said. Peace, love, 2023. This is the last one of 2022, and we are out of here. It's a murder. My nigga Covey said he living life after life. I feel all the homies on the bunks that were talking night after night.